everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so grateful and fortunate to be here today with Rachel Hoffman here in her doll shop. And she agreed to let me do an interview with her because I have questions <laughs> that I'm dying to know the answer to. She said, nobody's gonna wanna hear that, Allison, but I know you guys wanna hear this too. Oh, that's so sweet. So, Rachel, thank you so much for having me here. When she asked me to come, I was like, nobody misses an opportunity. If Rachel Hoffman asks you to come visit her, Oh, that's so sweet. You do not turn her down. So anyway. Thank you, Allison. So I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna jump right into it with my first question, and this is my favorite question to ask people. What was your favorite doll when you were a kid? Well, when I was a kid, I grew up in a doll shop where we had a lot of dolls that were very breakable, and if you touched them and broke them, it was a really big deal. So I really liked Raggedy Ann. Oh wow! Raggedy Ann, you could drop her, you could hold her, you could play with her, and she was just one of those dolls that she, you could take her anywhere. She's not fragile, right? Yeah, yeah I liked her story. I, I kind of liked her simplicity. Mm -hmm. It was just something easy for me to figure out. And then, and then I was a bit of a tomboy. Okay, I, I got okay. out of dolls for a long time, and then and then got back into them, but. We're gonna come back. They were to that. so plentiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were so plentiful that I that I I wanted reptiles and I, juke. My mom gave me a doll once for Christmas, and I remember I cried because oh. I really wanted a jukebox. <laughs> I know. Do you remember what doll it was? It was something probably really awesome, but I really, really, really wanted, wanted a, a jukebox, mm -hmm. and uh, I was so d disappointed to get a doll. And my mom totally understood, but I was I was not into them as much. You, you go in and out. Yeah, right. You go in and out. So now you circle to today, yeah. and now you are the proprietor, proprietor of this doll shop. Do you have a favorite doll today? Oh, goodness. Well, Raggedy Ann is still one of my favorites, mm -hmm. which when we go and look around, you'll see the two huge ones I have up front. Very near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. So they're, I love them. And having a doll shop and all the different things that you see, you develop such a deep appreciation. Because I'm sure for you... Absolutely. Do you have a favorite doll? I do have a favorite doll. You do? But similar to you and your ragged, like Raggedy Ann, my favorite doll when I was a kid is my favorite doll today. Because it's the nostalgia, it's the connection that I have to the doll. Yeah. It's the thing that started it all for me. So right. my favorite doll is my American Girl Kirsten. Because that was the doll that just started my whole... I mean, I had dolls before her. I had Barbies. I mean, we all had a Barbie. I mean, you probably had Barbies. Uh, oh, yeah. Tons. I mean, Barbies is everybody's had entry kind Everybody of Everybody had Barbies. Point. Right. But, you know, American Girl Kirsten was the one. And she's still today. If my house were burning down, that's the doll that's I would the grab. One that's oh, the I one I'd grab. It. And she's not the most valuable doll in the yeah. house. And she's, she's not the cleanest doll in the house. Yeah. Because... Eight-year-old Allison played with her, but she's the one. Yeah, there. absolutely. I love that. So I think we have some parallels there mm -hmm. because I still just they have so, the Raggedy Ann's have such a place in my mm -hmm. heart. I'm very selective about the ones that I buy. They have to be mm -hmm. giant, like yep. like up front. Uh, but we do have a lot of them here. Um, do so, you yeah. see that with your customers too? Do you see that they're they're going after dolls from their childhood or that they have special memories of? from when they were kids? A lot of them do, for sure. And a lot of them are making up for what they didn't get exactly. as a child or, mm -hmm. or maybe that their friend had that they would have wanted to have. And that's a lot of what doll collecting really is. It's, it's, it's an idealistic way to, to travel and to learn and to be and to play. And, and so a lot of them are like that. And then a huge part of our clientele are people that developed an appreciation later in life. In their mm -hmm. 20s, 30s, 50s, 80s, they just decided, you know what? I really love this kind of doll and I'm going to go after it. Because dolls are gone. fun, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So talk to me. I know that this was your mom's shop. So mm -hmm. talk to me about the evolution of the shop. This is a very this is a very complex question. I need to break it into more bite-sized pieces. So talk to me a little bit about your mom's legacy here in the shop. Let's Aww. start with that. Yeah, well thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a very near and dear. I don't know how much the camera can see, but maybe we can we'll just, get some we'll B-roll. Push, it up, push the, it up there. Yeah. Um, th that's a picture of of my mom when she was uh, pregnant with me in the first shop right there. And, oh, wow. uh, you know, it's just, a, it's a family affair. My mom mm -hmm. had an antique shop to start. And um, these are just pictures right here of my brother, Daryl, and my dad, hopefully you can see him, um, re refurbishing this place. When my mm -hmm. mom bought it, she bought it on a quick sale from the bank. It was a mess wow. and they, um, the original paint and just I came across these Polaroids the other day That's of, them, incredible. of them putting it together and she just had such a vision 
hopefully you can see that right there with the the doll shop and the the outline of it was over 35 years ago she started as in an antique shop all antiques mm -hmm. no not one doll mm -hmm. and then her her mom my grandma used to say can you look for these dolls at an estate sale ah. and then one day my grandma said you know what i don't i'm i'm done with dolls i don't want dolls anymore and my mom was like what well i just bought you all these dolls so i guess i'll put them in my antique shop for sale so grandma just turned it off like just that just turned it off like a faucet i don't know how one does that i don't either i could never do that <laughs> i i, I, I I'm speechless. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't either, but I know. yeah, just, I mean, just, I guess some people can. Yeah. Just one day decided. Yeah. So um, my mom put them in her doll shop, and they sold immediately. Yeah. And my mom, being the business woman that she is, thought, you know what, this is something. And then she fell in love with uh -huh. doll collecting and dolls and, and everything. And then we, she became a, a doll shop. Now it wasn't until my mom went to heaven that I decided, you know what, we're going to focus a hundred percent on dolls. And I was going to ask you that because I saw a comment on one of your Facebook posts recently because Rachel has been working really hard to kind of revamp the shop and kind of move some displays around and things like that. Somebody commented, so is your focus now only on dolls and you're not going to be focusing on other antiques? So tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, the dolls, see, my mom, she she's old school. And mm -hmm. so for her, it was very hard to say we're not dealing in jewelry anymore. We're not dealing in furniture anymore. She didn't want to let go of any of it. She mm. wanted to have all of it. Even though those price tags on a lot of those things were 25 years old, we couldn't even read the price. Wow. All these all these wonderful antiques were taking up very valuable, valuable real, estate. real estate in our shop when we could, you know, I'm like, mm, we could fill it with all dolls mm -hmm. and up the ante even more. And so after she went to heaven in 2020, I, I just, we liquidated all of them. We, we did very well. I bought a new roof. We refurbished. And I said, we are just doing dolls. And it took so much pressure off of me because I had a focus. I could right. say, we're focusing on dolls. We're going to try and do different kinds of dolls. But it's just dolls. Right. And so I didn't have to say, I have to know everything about jewelry and furniture and glassware and, and all these antiques that I'm like, I don't, this is too much. Right. And it helps, too, when it's something you're interested in because... Yeah. You know, f for me, well, tell me about this. How is the antiques community, like the antique collecting community, different from the doll collecting community? I, I imagine there's got to be a difference in the type of. When you say antiques, you mean antique dolls? Like, or just I like mean, antique? just antiques, like the antique, the other antiques. Any other thing that's not a doll, like. There's, there's little communities in every single collecting type, okay. type and era and, mm -hmm. and sector. For me, the dolls were just so much fun. Mm -hmm. I, I really wasn't interested in doing anything else, even though it might have even been lucrative. Right. Uh, we could have done very well doing anything if we focused mm -hmm. on it. We could have still been a successful generalist antiques shop. Right. But the doll thing was just, that's something I could kind of latch onto and, and figure out. Mm -hmm. And I just really wanted to do just that. So we just kind of, we went there. But in every collecting community, and that's, we're doing a, a, a seminar on social media. You can access all of that through social media, right? No matter what you're interested in, with Facebook groups and stuff like that. Well, it's interesting to me because I am in. I'm in. I do not collect antiques, nor do I collect antique dolls. Neither one. So being here for me is really educational and interesting because Rachel has such a beautiful collection of antique dolls here. They're they're incredible. But I'm in another community that is for antiques, just general antiques, and it's a totally, I, I don't want to use the word hostile, but it just came out of my mouth. It's a different type of community. It's yeah. not as warm and welcoming and as embracing as the doll community. So I had wondered if you had seen oh, kind of I, some I of I that or if it was, you really yeah. didn't get a lot of that. Uh, see the antique, the antique dolls, which we are very, mm -hmm. very active in. Mm -hmm. That's that can be kind of because there's hard rules for right, for gotcha. antiques mm -hmm. and, for, and antiques in general mm -hmm. and antique dolls. Whereas with the more modern dolls. Sure, you can switch the wig, you can switch right. the eyes, you yeah. can switch the body, you can switch everything, you can do all mm -hmm. this stuff. It's a little bit more playful. The antiques, it needs to be original, right? It needs to be... For a lot of, for a lot of people, yes. And when we are working on an antique doll, we do everything we can to preserve the originality. Mm -hmm. So it's just a different way of collecting and a mm -hmm. different way of enjoying and playing. Um, so 
It's just different. I have right. that's. I think that, but that's one of the secrets to our sauce is that we do everything. Yeah. We do a little bit of everything. A little bit of all the dolls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. I, I'm in this general anti, and, and people talk about like bread baskets and things like that, and they're a little, they're a little, they're not as warm as the doll community. So I, I, yeah. I just, I really love the doll community though. Me too. That's why I'm like do this stuff. So Me too. It's so much fun. It is. What has been your biggest challenge? in doing this like the whole thing what has what has been the biggest challenge for you oh gosh uh, we've had a lot of challenges <laughs> and just anybody that has their own business or that is trying to make it in a, in a niche market mm -hmm. too it's it's definitely not easy i would say one of the biggest challenges initially was stepping into my own skin and and believing that i could outside of my mom's shadow um, right. when my mom passed away I, for a very long time, felt very, very lost. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just felt like I knew I could do it, but I had to remind myself who I was, what I wanted to do, what my vision was, and I had to make some very hard choices to be able to stay in business and to do what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say shadow because I've stepped, there's so much... But you know what I mean. I do. Like I to, know exactly to, what to you own mean. it myself. Right. right. And when she, when she to make it yours to make it mine. Mm -hmm. And I had been managing it for a while, but when she actually left this earth, I suddenly felt like I might as well have been six years old. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I don't know how to do this and taxes mm -hmm. and filling out paperwork and like I literally had to make so many phone calls where I said, "Hi, my name is Rachel Hoffman. My mother Diane Hoffman owns this company. She passed away." how do we do this? Oh, wow. Like, how do I, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do that. Right. I ran our website and I yeah. took photos and I went to doll shows. Uh, so I had to kind of learn how to run a company through trial and error. And, and what was the, was there one contributing factor or one deciding factor that made you decide, I, I do want to do this. I do want to step up and I want to yeah. own this and make it mine and put my stamp on it and put my stamp into the doll world. Yeah. Well, one of the things that was a really big thing is that when my mom passed away, she did not leave me, um, she did not leave me a pile of cash. Mm -hmm. This She left me this, this. incredible place. Right. And, and so it was either sell everything and then mm -hmm. that would be, and then I could do something completely different mm -hmm. or continue and do this but make it make it yours and 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 do it so i i loved what i was doing D the doll people were a blast right i was already just having we're so, so much, much fun, fun. yeah all of us seriously so much fun <laughs> we are i have i worked um selling jewelry for eight years i've done other things in my career mm -hmm. many things and every time i came back to it of like what i could do to make money to support myself to have a career Dolls were always just, it was so different and so interesting and so fun. So I thought, well, I could be successful doing this, 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 or this. But I, I think I want to do this. Well, it's, it's too, when I first walked in here, so I've seen, the, I've seen Rachel's videos. I'm sure you all have. And you see the shop. But when you step in and you're seeing it, in person in 3D, it's just very overwhelming. It's I think I was like giddy and clapping and a little, doing a little Aww, bit of balancing. So sweet, and it's such a beautiful way to honor your mother's legacy. I Thank think you. everything is just it's it's just incredible in here. It, it is really like a fantasy land when you step in here. Aww, so thank you. I really love what you built here. Um, what is the thing that you are most proud of that you've done? Well, one of the things that I am most proud of is that. Yes, if you if you had visited several years ago, see in, until my mom actually passed away, I didn't feel like I I didn't feel like I had the right to change things. Mm. Even though I knew so bad in my soul and in my bones and I was running the company for a solid 4 years because she had Alzheimer's, even then, I still while she was here, I still didn't feel like I had the right to be selling off all of her antiques mm -hmm. and to be doing all of these things that I knew right. she wouldn't she in her right mind wouldn't want me to do even though it was the right decision. Right. I didn't feel like I had the right to do mm -hmm. that. And until she left, I I said, "Okay, this is what she wanted me to do." I'm going to I'm going to do it but I'm going to make it mine. Do it your way, right? And so we we the way we do business and the way we're a doll shop, we're in Denver, Colorado, we're in the same building. Everything is different. And so so many of the parts and pieces are honoring her, but I think I'm really honoring her by having by doing it, by having fun, by making it mine. I think as a parent 
for your children, what, what any parent wants most for their child is for them to be happy and successful. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want my mom to worry about me right. after she left. Mm -hmm. I wanted to... I wanted to just do it, and and so making it mine and putting my stamp on it mm -hmm. has been one of one of the greatest challenges in, in figuring that out in the beginning. Right. And then um, one of the things I'm most proud of is just yeah. honoring her, but I'm like doing it myself. You're doing it your own way. Yeah. And I think what you said, you know, she wouldn't have wanted to let go of the antiques. No. I think that comes from the collector's heart, though. Yeah. Those of us with a collector's heart, you know how you don't want to let go of yeah. some of those things, but sometimes you have to. Like, I know yeah. just from my own perspective, I have a room full of dolls and I love every doll, but sometimes if I want to bring new dolls in and I want to have new things, yeah. you do have to let go of, yeah. you have to put a focus to your collection or to whatever you're doing. So, you know, I think that's, that's really interesting to me that that was such a difficult decision, but... It definitely was the right decision. And we all face that, I think, as collectors. I think everybody that collects something, unless you have tens of thousands of square feet right. to <laughs> right. house your collections in, I think we all have to make, we even have museums make have to make decisions with, with their precious pieces of what are we going to put on display right yeah. now and what, what not. So You only have a certain amount of space. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had so many things here because I, I really, really, really wanted to be a doll shop. Right. I, I didn't want to be an antique shop that had dolls. I just I just wanted to try this, the doll thing. Right. And we were never just dolls. Actually, see, the dolls were paying for the light for for the entire thing, but the antiques were taking up like the, we're taking all up it. all the space. Right. At the point that my mom passed away, our roof mm -hmm. we needed to have it replaced for the last 20 years we had buckets all through oh, okay. the sh shop we my my final straw was uh we had a an original brew that was in her trunk and the rain it was like a ten thousand dollar loss it, it destroyed so many things mm -hmm. and and i just and i called my dad and my mom was still alive but, he, but she was not working and i said dad i, I i'm i'm replacing the roof I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm just doing this and and I didn't really need his permission but I had to but just like But you wanted tell to somebody. to like tell him. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like if we are going to stay here, if I'm going to make a career, if we are going to be here, we have to have the basics, like a new roof. Right. My mom would never put on a new roof. She wa she always wanted to buy dolls. Like, I get it. Right, yeah. I get it. That's the collector's heart, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but you have to have a little bit of that business side, too. When yeah. You, yeah, for sure. And so that was one of the things, I think, that helped a lot because my mom is a collector and I am a collector of sorts but I'm still a business person right. which mm -hmm. has helped it's well, helped you, a lot what I think what people are drawn to what I'm drawn to about you and what other people are drawn to about you is you have the collector's heart but you also are a businesswoman so you're able to and I think that's that's such a good mix because there are a lot of people out here that do doll things but they're not they don't have the collector's heart so it's you know they may have an artist heart or they may have and, and that's you know yeah. I'm very drawn to that as well but I think that's what people are drawn to is that you are a businesswoman but you have a collector's heart and other collectors we recognize that yeah. so we see that and we know that you feel the way that we feel about our things I so. do feel I and I know and I know the feelings right I, yeah exactly I you know, know what feelings. it's like yes. to get that new or for me, new. I know yeah. you do a lot of antiques, but like when you brought Elwin, when Elwin came back and like you debut, I remember I saw your video when she came. I was like, yes! yes. I was so thrilled. Oh, thank you. That Elwin was coming back, and I was like, you know, I know you you were a big part of making help helping make that yeah. happen happen. And I was just, oh my gosh, I was so thrilled. And yeah. and you knew what we as collectors wanted, and so I think that's yeah. what people recognize. So. My next question is, okay, so the way that I have, okay, I do a lot of research in old doll magazines, and so in those magazines there are a lot of advertisements from your mom, like where she took out full page so sweet. doll ads, and I'll show some of those to you guys here. I want to know how the way she did business versus the way you did business, like the way you do business now, like kind of talk a little bit about that, like the, the way that business has yeah. changed over the last Sure. 30, 40 years. Well, it has changed and a lot of it is, is still the same. And, and that is one of the, one of the wonderful gifts that my mother gave me mm -hmm. is that 
I am never too quick to discount the old school way of doing something. Right. Mm -hmm. I think when a lot of people want to start a business, they go in and they spend way too much money. They spend way too, they think they need all of these things and all of this stuff and all, and they get way in over their heads and it, they, it doesn't, they don't stay. (laughs) They don't last very long. And I brought in a new school way to do a lot of things mm-hmm. like social media and YouTube and, and a lot of things that I do but a lot of the ways that we do things and the way we deal with other people is how my mom did it and how she taught me mm-hmm. and so it's a hybrid of, of both so yes it's changed but a lot of it is the same well the heart's still the same mm-hmm. it sounds like the, yeah. the way you deal with your clientele and hundred percent the heart is still the same you're just adding those things that are available the tools that are available to us now yeah. that weren't before Oh yeah, social media and and running a business is it used to be kind of like a nice thing to have, and it's not a nice thing to have. It's essential. It's essential now. It's yeah, for essential. sure. Absolutely. So we develop. We I, I spend I spend over a thousand dollars a month just on my editor. <laughs> just, right. just so it's yeah. and a lot and a lot of people that are. Um, not in that might might think oh my gosh like you do yeah. that and but my mom used to spend that much on a magazine well people don't understand too how much editing i mean how much time editing takes oh, like you there would be no not way even that much considering the amount of hours right considering yeah. how much like yeah. how well the videos that you produce are edited they're amazing and thank yeah. you i mean thank that's you. that's a part of a you know your budget so well and i do and and mm-hmm. i'm magazines they're they're important and we we do that as well but for me I'm always looking at what is going to yield the best results right. for the for Absolutely. the money right. and so we we do that now you do your own editing I do and it and takes a long time <laughs> yeah but you do but it I do it job. as a hobby right I'm, this is not my career one day maybe but no but you know so I do it myself when I have time but it's your career and I, yeah. I just think it's I love the content you produce and what you put out there and I just think it's it's so fascinating that this has been in business for so Thank long. Thank you so much. And just to see the evolution. And I remember when I'm, I was reading through those magazines and I saw the first ad, I got really excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, I know. And I would not have known who that was or yeah. what that pa- one page. There were plenty of one page ads in there of, of all defunct doll shops. That's the only one that's yeah. not defunct. So it's it's very it was interesting to see and I knew who who that was and what that shop was because of Thank you. your social yeah. media presence. It's it's very important and I I think it's for the heart of so many doll collectors out there and just for our hobby it's mm-hmm. it's important for places like mine to exist. I agree. Just as long mm-hmm. as you know somebody's out there. Mm-hmm. When when something closes, a little piece of our heart dies. It like, does. It does. When the American Girl shop out here in Colorado closed, um, we just like it's just like we're clinging on to ours in Charlotte, and yeah. we're hoping that it doesn't yeah. go away. Yeah, a friend of mine and I text about that all the time. Like, are we going to lose ours next? Like, right, and so it stuff, is sad. Yeah. yeah, and every time a, a doll shop closes or whatever, see, I've I never want to be the only one doing what I do. Right, ever. I don't want to be the only doll shop. I don't want to be the only person creating the kind of content that I do. Mm-hmm. There is just so much room at the table for everybody, yes. and I thrive when there's more out there and more to that's, more to do. That's what I tell people all the time on my channel, on this channel, is that the more of us there are, the better it is for everybody because 100%. we attract more people to yep. the hobby. I've had people tell me, I was not a doll collector. I somehow got stumbled onto one of your videos. Now I have three dolls. That sort yeah. of thing. I'm like, that's what we're here to do. And it's the right. same thing because we are, I think that's what, part of it too I try to build community I try to you know share my doll knowledge I think you're doing the same thing oh yeah and it's just really inspirational to see that you're able to do that and maintain a business and you know I'm just I'm inspired by you I'm inspired by you too (laughs) yeah 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 I, I first started watching your videos during the pandemic and you just you just got right out there and the the wonderful thing about you that it, so many people have told me that they appreciate about you is that you're a doll collector's collector. You'll you can go to a garage sale yes. and, or buy something for fifty cents or mm-hmm. whatever, and you can talk about that as much as something that was it's thousands of dollars. Yeah. And I just love them just all. dolls. Yeah, and that's what people love. That's what people love. I like everything. I, I love it's it too. But when we're 
were talking about the space in the room earlier. Yeah. That's when you come across a great sale and there's a bunch of great dolls for yeah. 50 cents and you bring them all home. It's like, okay, yeah. ooh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> you have to make some decisions. You do, you do and have to make I some have tough two semi trailers that way wow. and a 20 foot storage container that way wow. that are full. So I know. I know the struggle. Yeah. I know Ooh. the struggle. Maybe that's what I need to get is a storage, is container. A storage container on my property. Just well, you, you could. <laughs> I could, yeah. You could. They sell them at the junkyard near my house. The Honest, big, the big tra they, they tractor really, trailer. They really do come in handy. We don't put things out there that would melt yeah, or right, anything like right, that. that but there's a lot of things yeah. you can. Because not always do you want to sell something to get something. Right? Right. Am I right? Yeah. Sometimes right. you just got to like find a spot for it right for a sometimes while. you just want to put it and have it you know, yeah for sure yeah so just at the end of the day when people come to me and they watch my videos or they visit the shop my my goal is always for them to feel welcome and mm -hmm. to feel like they have a place at at the doll table mm -hmm. I think growing up a lot of times especially when I was in the antique community and things a lot of the modern dolls were shunned Barbie mm -hmm. was even shunned if it wasn't X Y and Z it was not allowed and stuff and then I when I came along I just I cleared the table mm -hmm. I put down my map and I was like this is how we're gonna do it and I just went for it I love and it. people they gravitated towards that and the only rule is just is kindness and just having fun yeah absolutely. having fun well is there anything else that you want to share with us that I didn't touch on about the shop or about your journey to get to this point or anything like that? You know, the, when when you see me and you see all, all and you see the beautiful everything and or whatever it is, I just I try to really just send the message that um, anything is possible. Any anything is possible and. Uh, there's just so there's so many ways to live and to have a happy life and to experience dolls and you you belong at this table right and even if you don't have that kind of doll mm -hmm. even if your collection is only in your heart no matter how you want to collect and enjoy and, and live and, and live and breathe your your dolls you you belong here and and that's that's all I ever really want to share and do is just to make people enjoy and have fun and 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 to know that that you can be successful and um, you can do it. <laughs> I think that's the same kind of goal that we. I think that's why we get along so well is because we kind of have that same that same view yeah. of dolls and yeah. So just have have fun and don't don't worry about anything. Yeah. <laughs> just have fun with it, right? Right, for sure. I mean, that's it's my passion in life. Yeah. Now I'm an accountant during the day, but that's to pay for the dolls. That's, yeah. That's just the, the the dolls are my actual passion. So. Oh, I've always wondered what you did actually. I'm an accountant. So. Oh, okay, that makes sense because she yeah. she's done videos for us where I was like, dang, she is super good at math, <laughs> like that the doll scale video mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're very like analytical with like what I, I you am, put out. I'm that, I am very left brain. And so that's, I think that's I one that. thing I really love about dolls is I'm not a creative person in that sense. I cannot, I cannot make doll clothes. I, I don't, yeah. I don't do well, like even making dioramas, but I appreciate the artistry and the, that other people create. And right. then I can support them by having those things. And so they can do what they love and yeah. I can have what I love. So, well, anyway. and I, I really just want to, publicly thank you so much for bringing so many people to the table you bring so many people to the table every so. you do so many videos and for a lot of the, a lot of the people I first of all had no idea that they existed or about their art and then oh, yeah. I found out mm -hmm. about them so bringing people to the table giving them a platform and a voice and a way for them to have a voice in this community that's not easy and so you but really do a good job but with it's that a lot of fun. it is a lot of fun so Rachel tell if, if you're not already following Rachel with which if you're here on my channel you probably already are but if they're not just in case tell everybody where they can find you if you google Rachel Huffman antique dolls or Rachel Huffman dolls or 
Rachel Hoffman virtual doll convention, put something behind it because mm -hmm. there's other Rachel Hoffmans in the world, you'll probably find our channel and then the shop is Turn of the Century Antiques. We post a lot on um, Facebook mm -hmm. and um, well, there's multiple channels, but... And there's a virtual yeah. doll convention coming up and is it two weekends from now? It's uh, the Give last the weekend, dates. the 26th, 27th, and 28th of August. So it's coming, it's coming up. And I will leave, of course, all the links below so that you guys can follow Rachel on all her social media channels and thank you. Please consider coming to the virtual doll convention. I'm going to be in at least one Presenting. video with her. Oh, several. And and it, <laughs> that it's going to be a lot of fun and it's something that you don't have to leave your couch to do. You don't have to I know a lot of you that watch my channel like the fact that I kind of we talk about dolls and you don't have to leave your house to do it. So you can do that and we've got a lot of fun things planned that are going to be interactive. So even yeah. though you're at home on the couch, you're actually going to be able to interact with us in a way. Yeah, for sure. So make sure to register for that and check all that stuff out in the video description. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for sitting thank for this you. interview for me. Oh, it was a, it was I'm a really, blast. I feel so I feel so honored that you did this. Oh, I'm me. honored. I'm honored. See, and I'm honored she came here. I said, "Would you maybe consider coming here?" And you were like, like, "Hell yeah." Yes. I was like, I was let's like, "I am do coming. It. I yeah. will be there. Like, I've got to figure it out and talk to my boss." I know. She's she's so busy. Talk to my cat manager, You're, which yeah. is the husband, my husband. It's hard to leave home. It is hard. Yeah. But we, we really we appreciate you happen. making we the pilgrimage. Happen, so. so, I love well, it. Well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed chatting with all of you and thank you for the interview. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons from Patreon. Lindsay S., Leah W., Doreen Z., Janice H., Mercedes W., Cindy K., Bear Sunflower, Diane B., Kelly L., Cindy L., Susie W., Krista R., Victory Run, Shorna R., Shira Star Hobby, Stephanie W., Jessica S., Ray M., Asia C., and Black Y. Your support helps me continue bringing you great Dolly content, and it means so much to me. For information on how you can become a supporter of this channel, please see the link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.